Honda gets serious about EVs with this ENY1, a battery-powered compact crossover for small families. The unassuming looks and modest range and charging figures hide some tech cleverness here in the cabin and in potential options for charge management. Honda's still a company of innovation. Thank goodness. So, E anyone? Well, actually, this Honda's name is supposed to be pronounced E-N-Y-1. Uh, that acronym is probably a bit too clever for its own good, but this Japanese brand hasn't been when it's come to getting on board with the EV revolution. Now, at a time when other makers are flooding their product ranges with electric vehicles, the E-N-Y-1 is only its second EV and its first really credible one. We're testing it here just after launch in autumn 2023, which is all a bit late in the day for Honda, given that tough new UK government fleet emissions regulations are just around the corner, requiring nearly a quarter of the brand's total sales in our market to be EVs. By 2030, the brand says it'll have 30 of those, quite a few based on the all-new bespoke EN Architecture F platform that makes its debut here. But at the time this car's launch, the only other full electric vehicle that the company was selling was the tiny and divisive Honda E, uh, which very few people buy because of its tiny operating range. So this ENY1 needs to sell well and sell quickly, which at first glance looks to be a big ask given its ambitious retail price and modest potential EV range. Honda though has always done things a bit differently and claims to have approached development of this electric vehicle in the same way. It is, the company claims, the ideal car for first time EV drivers. It's built in Wuhan in China and it's produced as part of a joint venture with Chinese car maker Dongfeng who sell this model in their own market badged as the Honda Dongfeng ENS1. So, should you consider an ENY1 as an alternative to larger, longer ranging, faster charging, similarly priced rivals? Does this car really have the hidden talents that Honda claims for it? Both interesting questions, and you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to answer them. We already know from the Honda E that this innovative Japanese brand wants to make its EVs a little bit different from the norm. But whereas that car looks and feels outlandish from the get-go, this ENY1 greets you with a much more conservative vibe. It does seem a bit more futuristic once you take a seat at the wheel here. Uh, that's mainly because of this huge Tesla-like central screen but otherwise everything feels uh, quite recognizably Honda, even these chunky gear selector buttons. Now the norm in the brand's almost completely hybridized range, but this of course is an EV, the first electric Honda designed for volume production. So what should we expect? Well, Honda wants uh, this to be a model a first time EV convert would feel comfortable getting to grips with, which is possibly why this isn't one of those electric cars uh, which automatically senses your presence and starts itself. So you have to press this uh, partly obscured uh, start button, which to chimed accompaniment brings the instrument screen here to life and populates the central monitor with lots of initially complicated looking data and graphics. You're ready. But for what? Well, quite a rapid takeoff from rest. Uh, this car is a bit old school EV like that, which might be something of a problem if the tarmac's damp and you've selected the most urgent of the three provided drive modes, sport. Now, with that engaged in conditions like that, it really is extremely easy to spin the front wheels. And uh, if you're on a bend, you'll find yourself being skipped over to a part of the road that you really didn't want to be on. Apply the throttle more evenly or restrict yourself to the other two provided drive modes, Econ or Normal, and in damp conditions, this won't be so much of an issue. But we do still think that this ENY1's rather abrupt torque delivery would be better managed if Honda had specified a grippier set of tyres rather than the efficiency orientated Continental Ultra Contact rubber that's fitted here. 
This, after all, is an HRV-sized crossover with around 50% more power than an HRV, uh, 201 bhp to be exact, with 310 newton meters of torque and 0 to 62 in 7.6 seconds. Although, of course, if you exercise either of those figures to any great extent or you approach the limited 99 miles an hour top speed, you'll find the 68.8 kilowatt hour battery's mileage range dropping like a stone. Uh, that's something that you're going to have to manage here because uh, there isn't that much of it, at least not by the standards of the EVs which also sell at uh, this Honda's quite exalted price point. As you'll hear uh, elsewhere in this film, the quoted 256 six mile range figure, which uh, incidentally we found very difficult to replicate with this test car, is really somewhat disappointing in a class where the norm is 270 to 280 miles, uh, with better models up at 320 to 340 miles. Of course, if, as will often be the case, this ENY1 is only to be used as an extra car for suburban journeys, then range realism won't matter very much. Uh, for that, your priorities are much more likely to centre on ride and refinement. Does this uh, Honda make up ground there? Well, to some extent, yes. All removing an engine does in quite a few EVs in this class is to more greatly highlight wind and tyre noise. There's little of either of that here, and you really get the benefit of it at higher speeds, where progress is accompanied by the kind of hush that you'd expect in a larger and more expensive EV. This hasn't happened by accident. Uh, the wheels feature built-in resonators to try to cancel out road roar. Uh, there's a special damper on the rear axle and strategically placed insulation has been scattered around the cabin. In suburbia though, all this effort's occasionally slightly undermined by a higher than usual level of electric motor whine. Uh, that sometimes even eclipses the mandatory pedestrian warning noise. Ride quality is a bit of a mixed bag too. On the highway it's very good, but you might not be so impressed over poorer surfaces at urban speeds, where potholes and speed humps are sometimes more keenly felt than you might ideally like. Uh, no adaptive damping systems offered here to help counter this. Should you want to take the short way home after the school run, you might hope that this car's stiff new EN Architecture F front-driven electric platform might lift it onto a dynamically higher plane than some of its rivals. In some ways it does. Uh, good body control and accurate steering mean that fast point-to-point -point motoring is possible in this car if you really need it. Uh, that's something aided by steering wheel mounted brake regen paddles which you can use to scrub off speed before you enter a corner. And that replicates the feeling of uh, changing down a gear for a turn but a lack of steering feedback means that you won't often be uh, very much minded to seek this ENY1's handling prowess out and you really feel the weight of that big battery when you're throwing this car into a corner. Another disincentive to push on lies with braking performance. The braking system itself is a well-judged blend of friction and regenerative braking, but it doesn't pull the car up quite as quickly as we'd like, and that's another issue that would be helped by a set of grippier tyres. As you'd hope on a clean sheet design of this price, a certain amount of autonomous drive tech has been built in, uh, here courtesy of an assortment of cameras, radar and sonar sensors. Another standard adaptive cruise control system features integrated traffic jam assist now that can control steering throttle and braking for you in low speed queues at over 40 miles an hour the car switches seamlessly into its lane keeping assist system now this is a sort of technology that you'd expect from a larger mid-sized electric suv that this eny1 has been priced against but you might think you could happily do without it if it meant that this car could instead be priced against more natural competitors in the more compact Kia Nero EV Hyundai Kona electric sized class just below and we certainly wouldn't disagree with that.
There's every chance you might mistake the ENY1 for its hybrid combustion-powered HRV stablemate rather than the completely new design it actually is. The looks, uh, the dimensions and the token crossover vibe are all similar with both cars and in the case of the ENY1, pretty conventional, which is a bit disappointing after the adventurous and futuristic styling of the brand's very first EV, the Honda E. But that didn't sell very well and it wasn't targeted at the kind of volumes being envisaged here. In profile, the ENY1 looks particularly HRV-like, although its bespoke platform allows it to actually measure in 47 millimeters longer. There's a similar coupe-like roofline to that car. Uh, the doors are carried over two, and there are tightly defined belt and character creases and smooth surfaces. Uh, the clean and uncluttered design uh, incorporates hidden rear and seamless front door handles, plus there's a short front overhang and large black 18-inch wheels are fitted to both available variants. But there's nothing uh, especially SUV-like, so there's no roof rails or accentuated wheel arch cladding. The 4,327mm body length sees this car fall between market sectors, but it's sized closer to the compact end of the crossover EV segment, uh, 66mm longer than a Volkswagen ID3, but 257mm shorter than an ID4. A flush front grille houses a centrally mounted charging point and there's EV specific badge treatment uh, which sees the brand logo finished in white. A fine horizontal LED strip beneath the bonnet line uh, connects the slim LED headlights and creates a unique uh, lighting signature when you're charging. The sporty front spoiler lip appears to float beneath the gloss black finished lower grille section. Now this closes to hide the radiator uh, when the vehicle's parked up. Either side of this aperture, uh, indicator strips flow into narrow corner cutouts. This charging flap operates via a black button just above it, and the lights provided there next to the charging socket, that's something that quite a few competitors actually forget to add. And there's very little beneath the bonnet, by the way. Uh, there is only a Honda-branded plastic panel. At the back, the rear turn signal, braking and reverse lights are all integrated into a single combination tail lamp unit alongside a full width light bar, which is supposed to accentuate the ENY1's wide track and give it a sure-footed appearance. Uh, this smart typeface spells out the brand's name on the tailgate, and that's something that'll feature on all the brand's coming EVs. Uh, more significant, of course, is the all-new EN Architecture F platform that this car sits on, which will bring us far more dramatic Honda EVs in the future. Overall, then, a conservative exterior look, but will that approach be carried through into the cabin? To some extent, yes. At the wheel, it's not really much like any other Honda you'll have tried, mainly because instead of the usual rather basic looking Honda Connect central monitor, the brand has instead decided to fit a vastly larger Tesla-like portrait orientated 15.1 inch touchscreen, uh, somehow glued to the center of the low set dash. Add in the digitality of the separated 10.25 inch digital instrument panel and there is a satisfyingly tech heavy cockpit feel, although physical buttons and switch gear still feature. Now Honda says this cabin's been inspired by nature. To us it looks rather more likely that it's been inspired by the shop window of your nearest branch of Radio Shack, but the finished result isn't unappealing. Even so, you certainly don't feel you're seated in a car with an asking price of near on £50,000, but then that is also the case with plenty of this model's EV rivals. Still, Honda has done what it can to push the ambiance up market with blue ambient lighting on the dash and door areas, blue and white stitching across the fascia, and white piped synthetic leather upholstery that can be specified in lighter grey with this advanced spec uh, top model. Uh, this features smarter seat finishing and an area feel courtesy of this panoramic glass roof here. 
as usual with a Honda, the cabin ergonomics uh, almost faultless, typified by the clean center console here with its simple layout of the drive, park and neutral gear selector buttons. You'll also like the glassy cabin's almost uninterrupted sight lines and the supportive seats uh, which have thick urethane padding that improves ride comfort and body holding lateral support during acceleration and cornering. We mentioned the multi-info display digital instrument screen that this does without the usual cowling and so as one writer observed it makes you feel rather like you're piloting a laptop. Now you view this through this smart uh, three-spoke wheel with its incorporated brake regeneration paddle shifters. Honda isn't one of those uh, brands who designed such TFT panels to replicate the previous generation analog dials. That's all very avant-garde, but it does mean that you're presented with what initially looks like rather a haphazard mess of different information at first glance. Uh, analog instrument clusters were designed in the classic manner to enable the driver to assimilate information in a very brief glance. Uh, that's something that's rather more difficult here, and it's not assisted by the option of a head-up display display. There's a big digital speedo in the middle, while the right side of the screen, that's taken up by a fairly useless power and charge meter. Uh, the right side of the monitor, that can be tailored to what you want to see via this scroller on the left-hand wheel spoke. Energy, uh, speed and time, audio, phone, navigation, uh, speed settings, driver attention and safety support are the main options. Only when the car is charging does this screen's layout become really concise. It clearly shows battery capacity and charge time, uh, which is remaining, alongside a readout of recent drive efficiency. But if you thought the multi-info display was complicated, just wait until you try to get to grips with this 15.1 inch central touch screen, uh, the effect of which is a bit like having two Civic infotainment screens stacked on top of each other. The end result is certainly a lot of screen real estate, but it doesn't feel like that in practice because at no point is the whole display ever used for a single function. Instead, it's divided into three sections. At the bottom AC zone is a permanently displaying window for all the climate controls, uh, which unfortunately aren't backed up by any physical buttons. Uh, the middle driver assist zone is for EV and audio functions, and the top connect zone is for smartphone and navigation systems. Now, if you don't mind the data heavy layout here, uh, you'll find that this monitor does work well with uh, quick response times and sharp resolution. Frequently used features, they're always displayed most prominently for ease of use, and they can be personalized to suit user preferences. Now we'd expected that wireless Android Auto smartphone mirroring would be part of this new generation system, but no, only Apple CarPlay can operate without a wired tether. But this screen does, of course, allow for simple integration of third-party apps, and it includes in-car Wi-Fi, a DAB tuner with a front tweeter, a voice activation, and over-the-air updates. Aside from screens, there are some very nice Honda-style touches. Take the air diffusion system that's borrowed from the HRV. Uh, instead of the climate fan blasting you in the face when you're trying to quickly heat or cool the cabin, this rather cleverer setup channels airflow across the side windows and the ceiling, creating a gentle vortex that can be used with or without the standard airflow outlets. You get far more of a natural breeze and you're shielded from hot and cold rain radiation through the side window glass. Uh, talking of radiation, if your ENY1 features this panoramic roof here, which at the front has a manually operated shade, uh, the glass for it will feature a microscopic coating to improve thermal efficiency, as well as reducing the level of infrared and ultraviolet light that can pass through into the cabin. What else? Well, Honda's managed to find a seating position that feels neither commanding or sporty. Perhaps that's what the customer clinic told the designers they wanted. Maneuvering is straightforward uh, thanks to the good all-round cabin visibility here that we mentioned earlier on, but rear parking sensors and the reversing camera, uh, that's upgraded to a 360 degree monitor on this advanced model, come as standard just in case. Uh, this plush variant gets an upgraded audio system with these neat circular A-pillar mounted speakers. Build quality, 
from the Chinese Wuhan factory. Uh, that seems fine. And everything that you touch regularly is coated in soft touch materials. Although scratchier plastics do feature on top of the dash and lower down in the doors. Storage space is average. Unlike other EVs, the removal of the usual transmission tunnel hasn't freed up any extra stowage room below the center console. But there's a big open area underneath the huge central screen here, which incorporates a wireless charging mat, a 12 volt socket, and both USB-A and USB-C ports. Uh, between the seats, uh, there are twin open cup holders, and the armrest behind that conceals a smallish cubby without internal ports. An overhead sunglasses compartment, that's been forgotten. Uh, you're not gonna be using this open cubby by the driver's right knee for very much. Uh, the ticket clips are on the outside of the sun visors and the big glove box isn't cooled. Time to take a look in the back. Now this car's exterior dimensions may be closer to that of a compact SUV, but Honda says it's designed the feel of space in the rear seat to better match what you get in the mid-sized crossover models that this car is being priced against. So let's pull on this concealed upper door latch and take a look. Now to access the cabin, uh, you have to dodge this tapering C pillar. And once inside, well, there's certainly more room than you get with something ID3 or Kona electric sized. Uh, the feeling of comfort's aided by a seat cushion design with increased padding and a reduced hip point position. There's actually 780 millimeters of legroom. That's about the same as you get in something much bigger, like an Audi Q8 e-tron, which is astonishing from a car with a wheelbase length of just 2,610 millimeters. Honda has certainly maximized what it has, and there's extra space under the front seats that you can slide your shoes into. As you'd expect in an EV, there's a low central tunnel, but the slightly raised cushion in the center part of the bench will make it difficult to take a middle seated adult for any significant distance, even if the cabin width had allowed it. This bench doesn't do anything clever like slide back and forth. Uh, we had hoped it might at least recline, but it doesn't do that either. It's all a bit disappointing from the brand that once brought us endlessly flexible so-called magic fold up rear seats in cars of this size. Headroom is more of an issue, which is where we'll again reference this top variance panoramic glass roof. Uh, Honda was worried about headroom in the back, so rather than having a retracting shade as in the front, uh, for rear folk, the brand has fitted these removable panels. On the plus side, they do indeed preserve headroom. There's actually more of it than with an ENY1 uh, would offer without a glass roof, but that really isn't worth the faff involved in having to remove these panels and then find somewhere to store them. As for practicalities, well, you don't get door bins. Uh, there's just a small cup holder on each door instead. And there are more cup holders inside the fold down center armrest here. Uh, there are twin vents, but there's no three zone climate system option. And just below those are twin USB-C ports. Uh, there's a cubby too just beneath that. You also get seat back pockets and little circular overhead reading lights. We'll finish as always with a look at boot capacity. Now Honda talks about this ENY1's clever design and packaging, but that doesn't extend to provision of the kind of useful frunk underbonnet space that you will get with some rivals. So anything you want to carry has to go at the back here. Now you get a hands-free uh, powered tailgate on this top advanced spec model, and this rises to reveal 344 liters of space. For comparison, an HRV offers 335 liters and the Honda E just 171. If you limit yourself to base elegance trim, the capacity figure rises to 361 liters because of the less sophisticated audio system. But even that is way off the class norm for an EV crossover of this price. A Nissan Ariya has 466 liters and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 has 537. Even a Kia Nero EV from the class below has 475 liters. Still, at least it's easy to use what you do have. Uh, there's a low tailgate aperture and a high boot floor, uh, plus the cargo area is a good square shape. So getting awkwardly shaped items like baby buggies in and out shouldn't be too difficult. Honda doesn't provide an adjustable height boot floor uh, and there really isn't very much space underneath this cargo base. There's just enough for a set of charging leads. Certainly not enough though for any sort of spare wheel. So uh, if you do get a puncture, 
future, as with most of this car's EV rivals, you're going to be stuck by the side of the road with a can of sealant. Uh, we would want the molded plastic cargo base tray that has come with this test car, although it does rather get in the way of the two tie down points and also the recessed area off to the right. Uh, there's a light on the right and there's a bag hook on the left and the fabric tonneau cover, uh, this is one of those uh, that lifts out of the way because it's attached to the inner part of the tailgate. If you need room for longer items like skis and you have a couple of rear seated passengers, then you're gonna be out of luck because Honda doesn't provide you with a ski hatch, uh, such as you get in a Volvo XC40 recharge or a convenient 40-20-40 seat back split, uh, such as you'd get in a BMW iX1. Fold the rear backrest down and there's up to 801 litres of flat space to the window line or up to 1,176 litres if you load up to the roof. From launch and at the time of this test in autumn 2023, Honda was requiring a starting figure for ENY1 ownership of around £45,000, but that will probably be uh, irrelevant to most likely owners who will be acquiring this car under some sort of PCP finance scheme. Uh, that ambitious pricing is at least matched by high equipment levels, and that uh, counts whether you go for base elegant spec or for just over £2,000 more, range topping advanced spec. Now, if you are are thinking of acquiring this car on a PCP scheme. Uh, Honda told us at the time of this test that a three-year PCP deal on this car could be available to you for just under £500 a month and that's based on 10,000 miles a year with a £5,000 deposit. Now, before we get on to competitor valuation comparisons, uh, we'll point out that if you are set on a Honda, this top advanced spec ENY1 is only around £7,000 off what you'd need for the brand's CRV ePHEV plug-in hybrid, which has an EV range of 50 miles. But that is a considerably bigger car, and ultimately it guzzles fossil fuel, which is the kind of thing a potential ENY1 customer will be anxious to avoid. Such a customer uh, may well have looked at Honda's very first production electric vehicle, uh, the Honda E, which as we filmed was priced from around £37,000 and uh, they found it too small and range restricted. For reference, uh, Honda's smallest combustion SUV, the HRV Hybrid, which is much the same size in fact as this ENY1, costs from around £31,000. Rivals to this ENY1 are many and will be difficult for the brand to overcome at the ambitious pricing levels being pitched for the car. Now true, there are all kinds of segment EV rivals also clustered around the £45,000 price starting point that this Honda begins at, but nearly all those competitors are slightly larger cars with longer EV ranges. We're talking base versions of the BMW iX1, the Polestar 2, uh, the Tesla Model Y, the Kia EV6 and the BYD seal and you'd need only fractionally more for a base Volkswagen ID4, a Toyota BZ4X, Volvo's XC40 Recharge Pure Electric or 77.4 kilowatt hour versions of the Hyundai Ioniq 5. True, some class rivals you could look at do cost more. You'll need a £50,000 starting point for a Mercedes EQA or an Audi Q4 e-tron, but equally, we'd have to point out that there are some very good class alternatives that are priced from just over £40,000, like the Mini Countryman Electric E, uh, the Nissan Ariya, and the Renault Scenic E-Tech Electric. And our current class favourite uh, for this kind of EV, uh, the base sport version of the Fisker Ocean that costs from just £36,000. So you're going to have to really want this Honda to choose it, but you might. And if so, then you're going to need to be compensated for choosing this brand by a generous level of standard kit. So is that what you get here? Well, let's take a look at that now. All models come with 18-inch black cut alloy wheels, all-round parking sensors, privacy glass, LED headlights with a high beam support system, LED front fog lights, a rear view camera, auto headlamps and wipers, an alarm, and a very complete level of camera safety kit that we're gonna get onto in just a moment. 
As for driver assist features, well, there's an intelligent speed limiter, which adapts to the limit signs that you pass, and there's an adaptive cruise control setup, which incorporates a low speed following system. That's called traffic jam assist. Now this function uh, maintains a set cruising speed and following distance relative to the vehicle in front of you. Um, if the detected vehicle ahead uh, comes to a stop, then the function will decelerate and stop your ENY1 without you having to keep your foot on the brake. Uh, now, once the car in front starts moving again, uh, well, you simply tap the accelerator and that will resume. Uh, once you get used to using this in traffic, you'll really wonder how on earth you managed without it. So what about interior equipment across the ENY1 range? Well, inside there's synthetic leather upholstery, dual zone automatic climate control, a 10.2 inch multi-info display digital instrument screen, uh, there are heated front seats, and there's an auto dimming rear view mirror. Plus there are regenerative braking strength control paddles behind the steering wheel. Uh, there's blue ambient lighting on the dash and door areas, and there's a wireless charging mat. Media connectivity is taken care of by a 15 inch central touch screen with navigation, Bluetooth and a DAB tuner with a front tweeter. Uh, there's also Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, although only the Apple system is wireless. Now with this car, uh, Honda is also offering the latest version of its My Honda Plus smartphone app. And that includes remote vehicle locking and unlocking, uh, plus intelligent geofencing. Now this alerts an owner if the vehicle breaches a preset geofence zone. Plus there's also the ability to send journey information from the app uh, into the car's navigation system. All that comes with base elegant spec. Here we've chosen the uh, advanced spec model to try, which adds a panoramic glass roof, a hands-free powered tailgate, a premium audio system, uh, the Honda parking pilot setup, a multi-view camera system, uh, there are extra parking sensors too, and a heated steering wheel. Plus, at this level of the range, you have the option of having the uh, synthetic leather upholstery in an alternative light grey shade, which uh, does brighten up the cabin considerably. On to options. Uh, if you want your ENY1 to have a sportier look, then your dealer will point you to the optional Obscura Black Pack, which includes a front grille and a tailgate spoiler extension, both in that colour. Uh, there are also three different styles of 18-inch alloy wheel. Uh, you are going to need the basics first though. Honda sells its own wall box, the Honda Power Charger, and that offers a charging capacity of up to 22 kilowatts, three phase, and 7.4 kilowatts, single phase. And the brand offers the usual Mode 2 and Mode 3 charging cables. But disappointingly, uh, there's no heat pump option to preserve driving range in really cold weather. Uh, there really aren't too many paint choices here. Uh, you'll be selecting between Aqua Topaz Metallic, Vermilion Red Pearl, uh, crystal black pearl, urban grey pearl, or as in this case here, platinum white pearl. Onto the Honda sensing safety features fitted across the range. As you'd expect, it includes autonomous braking tech, a collision mitigation braking system, and forward collision warning. Uh, there is also lane departure warning, and there's also a lane keeping assist system. Uh, traffic sign recognition, that is of course also included. And earlier on, uh, we already mentioned the high beam support feature, which is built into those uh, headlights, and that auto dips them for you at night. Hondas these days additionally include road departure mitigation and there's a collision mitigation throttle control system which combats unintended acceleration. As for passive safety features, well, there's usual bouncy castle plethora of airbags uh, for the front driver and passenger, plus there's a passenger SRS airbag, front side airbags, and front and rear side curtain bags. A built-in e-call system will advise the emergency services about your exact GPS location if any of those bags inflate. What else? Uh, well, there are whiplash lessening front headrests and a brake assist system to aid the ABS setup in emergency stops, and that'll be advertised to following motorists by an emergency stop signal. Like all Hondas, uh, this one also includes vehicle stability assist, electronic brake force distribution, ISOFIX child seat fastening points, and a tire deflation warning system.
there are a number of reasons why you might choose this ENY1, but class-leading EV driving range and charging speeds won't be among them. Honda reckons uh, class leadership in those two areas isn't particularly necessary for the target market, who they think will want this car mainly for local journeys energised via overnight home charging. Well, perhaps they're right. Only 61.9 kilowatt hours of the 68.8 kilowatt hour battery's capacity is actually usable, which partly helps to explain the very modest 256 mile EV range figure we briefed you on in our driving section. Getting close to this requires virtually permanent selection of the provided eco driving mode and extensive use of the fiercest of the regenerative braking settings. These are accessible via the provided steering wheel paddles here. Now that range figure would be a reasonable one if Honda had priced this car to compete with EVs in the class below, uh, like say a Peugeot E2008 or a Vauxhall Mocha Electric. But the figures being asked here pitch this ENY1 into a higher segment where customers have much greater expectations regarding the distance that they can travel between charges. At least unlike with some rivals, the quoted range figures are reasonably realistic uh, as our top test efficiency reading of 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour suggests. But that was only when we weren't using the air conditioning uh, which we found trims the range considerably. In more usual motoring with climate engaged, efficiency dropped to around 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which gives a range of 211 miles. And on the motorway, it's more like 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which gives you 190 miles of range. Various displays show your remaining charge, uh, the clearest being a power flow graphic, and that can be selected on the central screen. Disappointingly, given the prices being asked here, Honda doesn't supply this car with a heat pump, which would preserve the range in really cold weather. That's not even available as an option. At the time of this test in autumn 2023, looking at comparable competitors with battery sizes of 60 kilowatt hours or more, only the base standard range version of Renault Scenic E-Tech Electric with 261 miles was anywhere near this Honda's empty to full mileage figure in this class. Otherwise, the base EV range class standard for an EV crossover of this size and price with a decently sized battery was in the 270 to 280 mile bracket. That applied to base two-wheel drive versions of popular class contenders like the Tesla Model Y, uh, the Fisker Ocean, and the Toyota BZ4X. Uh, two closely related models, the Mini Countryman Electric E and the BMW iX1 eDrive 20, they're closer to the 300 mile mark. But otherwise, just about everything else in the class is in the 320 to 350 mile bracket with base versions of the Polestar 2, the Mercedes EQA and the Kia EV6 towards the bottom end of that span and base versions of the Audi Q4 e-tron and the BYD Seal around the top. Now that BYD for reference takes you up to 354 miles between charges. All of which suggests that Honda really needs to start working urgently on its battery technology and the speed at which they can be charged too. This ENY1 can accept a maximum DC charging speed limited to just 78 kilowatts. Uh, to give you some perspective on that, base versions of Volkswagen's ID3 and ID4 models charge it up to 135 kilowatts, and some rivals are even quicker than that. Honda claims that this doesn't matter very much because thanks to a specifically developed recharging system which permits a sustained higher charge rate the car is able to maintain a higher average rate for more of the charging process now the linear uh, higher charge rate is maintained in an ENY1 for well over half the charge with very little drop off towards full capacity all of which explains why the charging times aren't as far off those rivals as the restricted charging speed figure might lead you to expect. At a public rapid charger, it'll take this Honda 45 minutes to charge from 10 to 80% capacity, uh, still about 50% longer than most of its rivals. And the brand says that at the charging station like that, you can add 62 miles of charge in 11 minutes. But as we said, most of the time, this little Honda will be AC charging at home, where a 7.4 kilowatt wall box will re-energize it from empty to full in around nine hours. AC charging from 10 to 80%, well, that'll take around about six hours. 
This ENY1 uses Honda Connect tech to conveniently manage your charging at home or at a charging station uh, from inside the car using the central screen's EV menu and remotely via the My Honda Plus smartphone app. A wealth of functionality is embedded in that app with it able to lock, unlock and start the car. Uh, plus climate control can be adjusted and activated prior to departure times or at a scheduled start time. The app also allows users to keep track of their journeys, uh, view the car's location and send their destination to friends and family. Further useful information is displayed in the app uh, including charge remaining, charge status and a charging timer. Via the app or via the car's central screen, Honda allows users to closely manage their ENY1's battery charging parameters if they want to do that. In order to adapt to different charging environments and to avoid charging failure due to fluctuations in supply or power surges, the Honda Connect system allows users to set uh, maximum charging current via home and away settings. Three levels are offered from low, which limits the current to 6 amps, to high, which allows the maximum maximum current of the connected charger up to the maximum charge permitted by the battery. Now this functionality allows the user to select the maximum current for AC charging to prevent it tripping the breaker in locations where a dedicated power breaker for AC chargers isn't used. Wherever you happen to be charging, you'll appreciate the little charging details. The ENY1 features a status indicator that makes it easy for drivers to check out charging progress from a distance. Uh, the full width black strip across the top of the charging port outside illuminates when it's in use, uh, displaying an easy to understand charging status at a glance. The horizontal strip under the bonnet line gently pulses from left to right when charging is in progress to create what Honda calls a digital heartbeat. And once it's complete, the strip stays illuminated to indicate that the battery is fully charged. In addition, it flashes red if a charging error is detected. And when charging is complete and the cable's removed, uh, the car winks goodbye, which is rather lovely. For the future, Honda already has a few charging tricks up its sleeve for this car, namely the company's clever e-progress charge management system. This is technology that the brand says will save owners money while also helping to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, now, it wasn't offered with this car from launch, but Honda does aim to have it fitted within uh, the next couple of years. The setup's based around a bi-directional smart charging hub which can monitor the current status of the electricity grid. If that grid has a surplus amount of energy, then the hub will charge the car that's connected to it. If, however, the grid is in a power deficit, then the hub will siphon power away from the car and either sell it back to the grid or use it to power the building that the charge is connected to. Uh, Honda says that this intelligent charge management system will help to smooth out daily electricity power peaks and prevent blackouts from overexerting the electricity grid. And the brand believes that the system could save between 400 and 500 pounds from its customers' annual energy bills. Uh, higher mileage drivers might even potentially double that figure. The e-progress charge management system could also significantly reduce an ENY1 owner's carbon emissions, especially when it's paired with an eco-orientated energy tariff. What else? Uh, well, like all EVs, this one falls into the lower benefiting kind taxation bracket of 2%, so company drivers could be paying as little as £280 a year. And until 2025, this car, like its rivals, will be exempt from VED road tax, uh, the London congestion charges and the EULA less tariff too. Insurance is Group 39 for elegant spec and Group 40 for this advanced model. Uh, the retail asking price includes five years of complimentary servicing, five years of European-wide roadside assistance and a five-year warranty. Uh, this can also be transferred to a new owner if you sell the car before the service plans expired. For all ENY1s, service corrosion is covered for three years, chassis corrosion is covered for 10 years, and structural corrosion for 12 years. Uh, this EV model's battery has its own separate eight year and 100,000 mile warranty, which guarantees charge uh, of at least 70% capacity. You're unlikely to need that actually because the special recharging system we mentioned earlier on helps to prevent premature battery deterioration and it helps to maintain range over the vehicle's lifespan.
This is certainly a more pragmatic kind of Honda EV. While a Honda E feels little more than a fashion bauble, the ENY1 is the kind of electric Honda you could actually countenance owning. Although we can't help feeling that for those who are committed to the brand and who want a small crossover, right here, right now, the company's similarly sized and much more affordable HRV hybrid might be a safer and more usable all-round choice. The industry, though, is out to convince you that owning an EV is where it's at. And if you've bought into that rhetoric, or you need to for tax or work reasons, then there are plenty of things that you might like about an ENY1. You might not be immediately sold on this car's conservative looks, but Honda cabins are models of economic excellence, and this one doesn't disappoint in that regard. Plus, there's an astonishing amount of rear seat space given the compact dimensions, refinement is excellent, and you get a very comprehensive after-sales package from a car which will probably be boringly reliable. For all those reasons and others, the ENY1 would be a good buy if it cost £10,000 less. Even a £5,000 reduction would see commentators like us less inclined to criticise it for its relatively modest driving range and its restricted DC charging speed. As it is though, for the kind of money Honda's asking here, those failings matter, or at least they will, if you want to use this car for more than simply cruising the suburbs on school and shopping trips. But if that's all you have in mind and the sticker price is palatable, or more likely you're offered an attractive PCP finance deal, then this Honda might be worth a look. Overall, the ENY1 has just enough of the brand's originality uh, for us not to dismiss it out of hand. And you shouldn't either. <laughs>